All right, so today's tech videos, we're gonna cover four length, or four length, four length. You can start over. No, that's no, right. And <laughs> shock. You know, no, when I show the people, this isn't rehearsed. <laughs> so four length and shock alignment and installation, okay? Because there are things that drive me crazy when I go to an event that people, they just don't know. So me, a lot of it is math, okay? Which I was a complete idiot in school, but a lot of it's common sense too. Like if you can see like what looks like it's gonna bind, if like you can see the big picture of things, okay? So the first thing we're gonna cover is four length. So a lot of you guys ask me how to determine how big the subframe needs to be. I'm gonna briefly touch on this, okay? If you have a truck, what I used to do was I would figure out what size tires I was gonna run, but now everybody switches tire size so bad. So let's just say I was gonna run an, uh, an 18.4, 57 inches. I put my axle at 26 and a half inches, right? 28, 28 and a half, I'm sorry. 28 and a half inches, I would put the center of this axle off of the ground on jack stands, okay? That tells me that that's where the axle needs to be. From there, I would go up, you know, another 28 and a half inches is the top of the 57. I'd add like five inches on top of that. So I'd go up to like, what is that? 34, 30, 30, 33, 33 and a half inches, right? From the hub to here. This thing right here actually is from the center of the hub to the bottom of the door is 34 inches. So that's where I could figure out where my body was gonna be. Then, once I knew where my body was gonna be, let's just say that you have a factory frame or you have a tube frame, okay? Then what you do is, I would come down and I would actually take two different tape measures to do this. What I would do is, again, this is where common sense in like kind of like having an eye, these numbers kind that they do matter, but only if you're getting like super duper serious. So what I would do is, let's just say that this one right here represents the, the top of my frame or like, you know what I mean? So if I'm looking at this tape measure right here, okay, and I've already explained this in videos before, but I'm gonna, this is what I got. Then what, all I'm gonna do is, my axle is at the height it needs to be, my frame is basically at the height it needs to be, and there's nothing in between. There's no shocks, there's no subframe. What I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna take my tape measure and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna come across pretty much level, okay? So that tells me that like right here at 41 inches, see on that tape measure, is basically level. So now I could get into degrees and all this stuff, but let's just say that like if we bring it up like, I don't know, five inches. We'll go to 36. That looks pretty good for a link bar. I'm, this is for a lot of you guys who are just kind of winging it in your driveway, okay? You just look at that link bar. Hey, Mark, how's that look? Yeah, it looks good, right? So now what you do is this, okay? Let's just say 36 inches is gonna be the angle of the link bar. You have to take into consideration some kind of bottom plate or tab. What a lot of you guys do is, now you bring the damn subframe down to 36 inches, right? Then this thing hangs down at least another three. So now you're at 39. So now your bars are lower than you really want them to be, which in hindsight, it doesn't truly matter. But if you're trying to get, you know, the thing off the ground a little bit. So what you got to remember is come into here, you now kind of find your level and just eyeball. It. And again, right in the middle of the axle, just eyeball what looks good. You know, you can even go up to like 30, you know, like, you know, have like that much angle. A lot of you guys are running like this much angle for your four-link bars, it doesn't need to be this way. Take the time to fix, to ju just fix the subframe. And I'm gonna show you on another, on another truck in a minute. Just bring it down, okay? So right there, it tells me how far my subframe needs to be. So my subframe needs to be roughly, if 36 is where my eyelet's gonna be, 36 minus three, 33 inches is where my subframe would hit, right? So on Matt's truck, let's see what this one is. That's 34 inches, so it's pretty damn close from, from the top of the pipe to the subframe, all right? So there's that for you guys. Then, now what you do, okay? So now we've got this kind of figured out, right? And you can do it any way you want. You can bend it like this, you can do a V. I run a V in mine because I just have a manual bender, so I put just a simple V and I tie it in. That's the easiest subframe there is right there, if it's just you by yourself. 
other guys you can do a compound bend put these okay then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the axle and you're going to figure out where you're going to put all of your link tabs up on top they are and they're down on the bottom so now what you do is you go to here and you have what's called axle separation okay this is how you set up the four link so axle separation so right now from where that bolt is right there to where that bolt is up there is almost 20 inches see it you can kind of see right there that's 20 inches of separation okay now this happens once the subframe is in okay this doesn't happen right away you can kind of set it up if you're a little advanced but for the most part you're going to get the subframe in so 20 inches on the uh, on the axle but this thing can be up to like 13 inches okay so with these adjustable tabs it can go from 13 to 20 inches of axle separation okay then you come to your frame you got your subframe in you got your bottom plate in now you're going to go up roughly 20 inches okay we're at 16 but this thing could easily go all the way into like this pocket right here okay it does not have to stay the same okay the way that like drag cars and all this stuff work is that basically what you'll do is you want this to close you want that gap big and you want this gap to close not you know that's for like drag car traction you know wheelie guys and stuff like this unless they've got buco horsepower but right now, the way this suspension is set up is very, very strong with a ton of flexibility and travel, okay? This is very nice for a mud truck. When you're cruising, it's just like this. When you punch it, the weight transfer isn't gonna rip the wheels off the ground. The, the front is the same as the back. So as the back squats, the front opens up. So it kind of works together. So like in a mud truck, it just does this, right? Where if you close them with big horsepower, it'll wanna do this right so which it looks cool but your front wheels aren't touching the ground so there's nothing to do so there's this one right here i'm going to step over i'm going to cover three different trucks today to show you guys kind of what we have going on and then um that's any questions i don't know if i'm missing something well with the questions with the four link and i ran that on my truck right um there was a few questions uh just recently about uh, heim joints yep. tractor joints yep. and so on and so yep. forth uh, in my experience, that plays a huge part. Yeah. What kind of joints you use for your four link? So, inch and a quarter, one inch by inch and a quarter Heim joints are pretty much what everyone runs, okay? Um, two inch by quarter wall DOM tubing for your link bars. Uh, like on my own stuff, I run uh, two and a half inch OD half inch wall with a two and a half or yeah, with a two inch OD bung. So it's just a bigger bung, but the Heim joint is still the same. The new Heims I got for this new truck are, um, they're massive. It's got an inch and a half shaft, right? But anyway, Heim joints are where you wanna be. Because what happens with tractor joints is, tractor joints, they're literally like, we use them for like, um, we use them for like sway bar ends because the side load it is what happens. Bushings, bushings are another one. Bushings are good, unlike Jeeps and crawlers and all that shit, because they're light. Okay, where a lot of guys don't listen and a lot of you guys go out and you get deals on shit and you, you know, you're trying something else that your buddy's giving you, just spend the money and just do this. If you're this far, I, listen, you guys, you know, a lot of you guys look at this shop and stuff and everything. I started from fucking zero. So, and I saved up my pennies. These things used to be 750 bucks for a set, you know, 10, 12 years ago. Now they're like, 450 500 bucks right the the price has come down you only really need them once so inch by inch and a quarter chrome alley heim joints rockwall off-road there's a ton of guys that sell them that's where you really want to go with so again the tractor joints not so good and bushings bushings are okay up to a certain time because the bushings over time that side to side play with bushings no good yeah, and the forward back movement Yep, the as forward well. back because it's a rubber bushing. Even if you have like Johnny joints and you get like big ass like, you know, like uh, curry axle ones and stuff like that, they're meant for like lighter vehicles or just kind of cruising. And don't get me wrong, I know they put them in Baja vehicles and all this other shit. I get it because everybody wants to fucking debate everything to death. They don't weigh 10,000 pounds, you know. They just don't weigh 10,000 pounds and they're not getting pounded. That axle in the rear is probably seven, 800 pounds at least with the tires. And then the four link itself has to take the sway. So your bottom bars control axle front to back. 
your top control side to side, you know? So over time of that, you know what I mean? Something's right. gotta go. And you've experienced before uh, on your personal truck, Ooh, uh, yeah. the bongs were ripped out. Oh, that, that's a great que uh, question. I was just gonna cover that. So what guys used to do, even on shocks, you have to do it on shocks too. You cannot, you cannot just make it tight to where, and like we didn't touch this, but Matt's got some washers in there. But either way, you've got to give that heim joint room to move. So if you've got a plate that is this thick, okay, right? If there's that much gap in between and that heim joint is that long, even, even shocks especially, if that heim joint needs to move like this, what happens is the heim joint hits the, hits the plate and it can't go anywhere. So what's gonna happen? That takes the load. Bam, breaks the weld, breaks the bung. You wanna give space. You want two inches, you know what I mean? Like two inches is a great, two and a quarter, three. You know, because you can space it down to that. You gotta give on the shocks and the four link, heim joints are supposed to move. Same theory with, with bushings and tractor joints, you know? Right. Um, they have to be able to move. And nowadays, back in the day, you, you know, when like we were running like 14 inch uh, big shocks and stuff, honestly, seven inches of travel up and down, it's really not that much, you know? So like the heim only moves like this, you know what I mean? 20, 24, 26 inch shocks, those heims are, they're well, working. They're meant to pivot. They're moving. Like That's back right. in the day when we used to wheel at seven Hans and yep. my Bronco I had, the front radius arms was just a bolt with a nut yep. through the bracket. Yep. And I kept breaking them. So by, by putting a heim joint, it stopped it. It yep. let let the front end because it, it was a it's got to move. Yeah, it's twin yeah. beam front end, so right. it made yep. the pivot. And, and then, I haven't had any issues. In a minute, I'm gonna get into shocks because shocks have something to do too with like angle and, and all this other stuff. But so before we go to the shocks, and yep. uh, you explain. So the bottom link bars control the front and back movement and the top link bars body roll body roll so side to side the geometry of this and we've seen a ton of different setups yep. with this but this is most common where your yep. out your bottom link bars yep. are out and then the centers comes to a helmet this is called triangulated four link then there's another style of four link that looks like this it basically you shoot whatever top it goes uh well i got my board in the way come from the back side okay. the other kind of four link still comes from the axle out here but it goes to the middle of the frame that so you see v this way v that way that's called dual triangulation that's for severe articulation that's a that's for a truck that's meant to flex jeeps do it all, all the time that's what gives them you know so much flex but most common for a box this, truck, this for is box the truck set. man is just this is strong and like i said when i get to my truck i'm going to show you if you look at matt's bars the bottom ones pretty much go straight back right and then the top ones are obviously triangulated okay this truck here kind of the, the drive shafts kind of come off to the side this is this is a this is a bog truck that that was built to jump and do and do other things all right so same thing with the four link we're going back over here we're just jumping over to my truck because there's a couple different ways to set this up the way I run my truck is I my frame is 42 inches wide outside diameter, and I this is two by four quarter wall, so that means 40 inches ID. What I do is I go from 42 inches on there to about 50 inches on the axle. So if you look at my link bars on the bottom, they're actually wider on the axle, and then they go back to the frame, okay? Because again, I don't know if there's a law for this or not. In my head, it makes sense that it's strong as shit when it takes a hit. Right? Now you can't go too far because if you run like 23 ones or a big tire, when you turn, the tire is gonna hit the link bar. So you kind of got to find your max. The other thing I did is on my triangulation, and we're gonna jump back over to Matt's, I have 12 inches of separation in between my bolts here. And here's why, because of that bad boy, right? My other oil pan is this deep all the way to the front, the one that I had in it. And I literally give myself like a half an inch clearance for the head of the bolt. So what happened before was, um, I never did it. A couple of my buddies have actually smashed the oil pan into the link tabs. So I got experimenting and I didn't really see any, as long as the sway bars are good and everything's good, I widened it. And I did the same thing on Matt's truck. We can go over here. This one is a fresh, fresh welded one. 
Yeah. You know, last episode where we were here, yep. the helmet wasn't built. Right. So this one here, I had to add a side, so we beat it down and we gusseted the crap out of it. Same thing. We've got 12 inches in between the bolts, right? Yeah. We got plenty of clearance for the oil pan to come. It, it basically gains you another four inches to go down. You know what I mean? So, and again, as long as the sway bars are good, your four length bars are good, it should be all good. Now, I, I heard you post just the other day about the bolt not being able to come out because of the other link tab was in the way or that's how it was put. That's over there. <laughs> okay, well, that's on yeah. the other one. So, yeah, so when you're putting this shit together, a lot of guys pile everything together. You know, Matt here at least, he put his four link bars down here, he put his limit chains up here, and he put his sway bars on the back of the axle, right? That's what a lot of guys do. Okay. My truck, same way. Uh, link bars here, limit uh, limit strap there, sway bar in the back side, right? So some guys, they kind of get everything congested, and I'll show you that on the next truck because that's even another style. So like on my four link, what I've got is, if you look at mine, Mine can actually come down a lot more in the rear. And I'd actually probably be like a cool wheelie guy if I so chose. If I dropped this thing all the way down, this thing would absolutely plant. It already will pull the wheels a little bit, but I like where it is right now. When you're wheeling, it's got tons of travel, tons of flexibility, strength, and everything. So that's this one right here. And then next, here's another good tip, real quick, real quick while you guys are here. This is something I did on my truck and two other ones. I'm gonna do it on, another, on two more this winter. When I made my plate to hold my four link, I put two inch holes right here, and that's two inch quarter wall all the way across because you want to hold side load on your, on your subframe. So when you put a subframe together, you know, you got this piece and you got that piece. Now, now you got to tie it together. It gets tied together with a transmission mount, which you don't really want that. Well, no, that's actually still just the frame. Um, so it gets tied together basically by the transfer case and by, by whatever you can put in the bottom. A lot of guys only put one bar across the bottom just to hold it together. Load that thing up, man. You know, load it up because if you roll over and you start really hitting and wrecking shit, this stuff takes a beating. This needs to be at least three eighths. You know, it doesn't really need to be much more than that. So some guys go half with like monster, monster big trucks, 24, five trucks and stuff. So this is just a good idea. Something that I just kind of had an idea and I ran with it and it's worked out very well. It also gives me the ability to go across and mount my transfer case and I can mount my drive shaft containments that I used to have. They come right off of here and they run right down the back side. So just a couple little tricks when you're doing your four link. Everybody here is the third truck in the shop right now with um, a little bit different style four link, a little bit different setup because we had to tie into what was existing. Okay, Matt's truck, he pretty much hit the nail on the head when he started. My truck was super sweet from the beginning anyway. And then this one here, we came in and we're basically taking this truck from a 14.9 truck to a 23.1 truck. So we had to tie into what was already there. So I'm gonna come over here. And what's nice about this, what you'll see is the four link on the front is different than the four link on the back. I did this on another 55 Chevy a couple years ago and it's worked great and I'll explain why because a lot of people will see this and be like oh it's not the same it needs to be different so number one what they did when they built this truck and I know that this truck was built quite a few years ago and most likely not not at a shop maybe it was maybe it wasn't it's a Toyota frame completely boxed and I'm not knocking this truck this truck is a it's got some really cool stuff done to it we're just talking about 2020 and the add-ons that we're doing so the old link bars literally went so like right here, okay? So the four link was down here, but this truck was a lot lower. So we had to come into here and we had to lower this thing down to accommodate 23 ones. So we took a uh, two inch uh, 188 wall for this. We knocked this down, made this, made our bottom plates, braced it in. I might put a plate in here, I'm not really sure. This is pretty stout. So what I ended up doing it, so what they did, if like you look at this, the reason why the four link is pretty much different is because this subframe they put in is directly under the cab of the truck. It's not in the center of the truck. So the center of the truck is like all the way back here, right? So they kind of missed it by like 14 inches, right? So going off of what's here, we, I left, I just moved the bottom link bar down, right? I left the top link bar where it was. We made a new one over there. This, th this looks great. Again, back to our axle separation, we've got, Oh, we've got about 
14 inches on the back. We've got about 16 on the front. So it's opposite the alligator mouth. So what this truck is gonna to wanna to do, it's not gonna to wanna to plant. It's gonna to wanna to just kind of hook and go, right? Just kind of just smooth. On the front, what I had to do, because it's so far forward, because if I would have left this up here, it would have alligator mouth so bad opposite that the front suspension would basically just drop down. You want it to work together and kind of like lay down. Again, mud trucks. We're not talking drag cars. This stuff is similar, but it's different. You want that front, at least me. I don't care about pulling the wheels off the ground. You want this thing to chew. So you want that front to constantly be digging, you know, just like this, not this. You want it to just do this, right? Kind of dancing, kind of dancing, right? So in the front, we've got, oh, 12 inches on the front to 10 inches on the frame. Perfect, right? The way this is gonna work, uh, it, it's gonna work great, is what it's gonna do. The way they did this, like I said, the front drive shaft is obviously shorter than the rear because of the way that they set it up. A lot of trucks you wanna set up so that so your transfer case is centered. You know, unless you're running like straight race truck, power glide, everything else, then you kind of slam everything forward and you move motors back. We'll get into that later in the winter. But right now for four link and stuff, this is really just kind of where we're at with this truck. So, and again, what's nice about this is this was a factory frame they mounted the body on it. They, they, they did a good job. You know, the truck looks really good. I've seen some pretty cool stuff that they've done. Um, but again, we're just touching on four link today. This is the one where I had to cut the tab off of the back because it wasn't, you know, oh, it happens when you're outside, you're in the shop. You gotta put that guys. there. <laughs> oh, did you catch that? Yeah. You gotta come with guys helping you. They put the uh, sway bar arms right here but they put this bolt through that way first so you can never get the bolt out. So just honest mistake. Everybody's done it once or 10 times in their life. <laughs> um, and uh, that's pretty much it. So. so do you think the way the subframe was built under this yep. is due because the uh, original frame is has a bent this way? Yes. Yeah, so what they did is like you can, you'll actually be able to see it's completely two different angles. So this pipe here, so they did this right here, okay, because this was easy. I'm not saying that it's any less. This frame is flat right here, flat. So the, this bend was easy to manipulate to get in there. Once you've got this piece in, now you can start to work off of it. Now they took a piece right here, all straight. They went straight to the frame right there, done. They went straight to the frame right there, done. Then they went straight back here, done. You know, so then all I did was I, I bent a piece right here in two spots to kind of continue this so it looked like it wasn't such, you know, whenever I work on stuff, I try to make it look like it was there in the first place. So I just kind of came down with this. I could not find a way it would just look good to drag this back 14 inches. It just would look like shit, you know? So we left it the way it was and then we just adjusted the four link to it. And uh, that's where we're at. So I'm excited to see this truck. You think that was a good decision, build it like that back in the day? Absolutely. Well, yeah, because it was it was just a race truck. You know, like there's videos of it and stuff down at Iron Horse. You know, it jumped. It did everything it needed to do because you got to remember, this truck was probably a foot and a half lower than it is right now. You know, this thing went up a long way. You're talking going from a 49-inch tire to a 65-inch tire. Ouch. Yeah, yeah, so right now we're set up for a 23-1. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, there you go, folks. Here's a, a little how-to on four link uh, we're going to be starting a youtube channel where all this will be populated so that way we can basically bring you all the information you can put it on your big tv in the garage big tv in the house and whatnot you can watch it's a lot more accessible on uh online uh, but also facebook once i get everything created i'll definitely will post everything up and uh It'll be easier for you guys to find on how to on everything that we build here at the shop. Until next time, Rome's out.